Hey everyone, welcome to this video tutorial of Avalon's accounting spreadsheet. It's a bookkeeping spreadsheet that you can use to do your bookkeeping and send to your year-end accountant. We have a simpler version of this template that is great for sole proprietors filing personal tax returns. However, this one that we're looking at here on YouTube is limited because it only creates an income statement and not a balance sheet. You can see here that we get an income statement out of this one. Simple template is good for sole proprietors that are getting ready to file a personal tax return, but it's not appropriate for corporate bookkeeping because it doesn't actually create a balance sheet for you. It only creates this income statement. So we've created this accounting template, which really is just a bookkeeping template, but can be used for year-end corporate accounting as well. So in this tutorial, I'm going to give you an overview of how to use this template and also how to edit things and change it so that you can make it work for your specific business and your specific purposes. All right, so first step before we get into anything, the first thing we need to do is create a copy of this spreadsheet. To do that, go up to the file menu, click file, and then click make a copy. It's going to ask you to save it as a Google Sheet within your own Google Drive. So you can see I've renamed the sheet and I've saved it in a folder that I created for things that I'm putting in this video. So you can save it in wherever makes most sense for you in your Google Drive. So we'll click make a copy and we have all the exact same things, but now you can actually edit it. If you used the original version and tried to edit things, you're going to get a note saying that you can't edit it and you need to request access. So most important thing, file, make a copy, or alternatively, file, download as a Microsoft Excel file, and you can actually use it in an Excel just as well. So here we are in our copy, and I'm going to do a quick overview of all the tabs first so you get a picture of what's going on here. First up, we have the Info tab, and it shows some basic instructions as well as a link to this video. There are also a couple of input cells here in blue that you can enter your organization name and your year-end date. Okay, moving on to the Bank and Credit Card tabs. So the bank and credit card tabs are where the actual bookkeeping or recording of transactions is done. We'll look at actually recording transactions in detail shortly. Next, after the bank and credit card tabs, we have the trial balance tab. And this tab collects the bookkeeping information and organizes it into a trial balance. You can see in the orange column, we have the bank account transactions. And then in the purple column, we have the credit card transactions. Then the total of the transactions really is just the bank transactions plus the credit card transactions. So we get a total of all transactions that you've recorded across all accounts. If you're not sure what a trial balance is, that's okay. It's basically just a report that shows every account balance at a specific date. In this case, once you've completed your bookkeeping for your whole fiscal year, it will show the account balances at your year end date. So we have a year end of August 31st here at Avalon Accounting. And that's the example we have our trial balance as at August 31st, 2022. Next, we have the income statement tab, and it really just takes the income accounts and the expense accounts from that trial balance and just repurposes them here to show total revenue and total expenses so that we can come out with either a net income or a net loss for the year. It's really just good for a quick reference to see how well you did for the year. The last tab we'll look at is the sales tax rate tab, and it's just where we can add or change sales tax rates to be used in the bookkeeping. I'll show you a bunch more on this later on. Okay, now that you have an idea of what's in the spreadsheet, let's do some actual bookkeeping. So step one is actually going to be outside of this spreadsheet, and it's to download your transactions. So if you go into your online banking or your online banking login for your credit card, you want to download your transactions for the entire year as a CSV file. Once you get them downloaded, you might need to reorganize them so that we can input them or copy and paste them into our sheet. So that's step two, organizing your bank or credit card transactions we can see back in the bookkeeping sheet that the transactions need to be organized in a specific way. We need the date followed by the amount and then the reference or description. And what's really important is that the amount needs to be specifically either positive for transactions where cash is flowing into the account or negative where cash is flowing out of the account. Like I mentioned, some banks will download your transactions that might look a little funny. It might look something like this, where you have the debit on one side, the credit on the other side, and then a running balance on the next column followed by the description. So in this case, we will need to reorganize these so that we can enter them nicely into our spreadsheet. So I'll show you a pretty quick way of doing that here so we can enter this information back into our bookkeeping sheet. First thing, we want to right click and insert a column. So we want this blank column. And what we want to show up here is positive numbers for deposits and negative numbers for any money coming out. To do that, all we have to do is just enter a quick formula. So we type equals 
and we want positive numbers first. So we'll click the first number under the credit column. And then we're going to subtract any debit items. And I know there's no debit actual item in this transaction here, but we're going to create this formula so that it adds anything that's here and subtracts anything that's there. And then all we have to do is click on the cell and grab this little handle and drag it all the way down to the end of our transactions. You can see here that we have positive transactions from the credit column and negative transactions from the debit column. Now that you have the transactions formatted the way you want them, just paste each column into your bookkeeping sheet. We're going to copy each column separately and then use Paste Special to paste them in the right spot in the bookkeeping sheet. I'll show you what I mean. So if I highlight the column, all the transactions, right click and copy or hit Control C and then go to my sheet. I have the amount column copied. So I right click again, choose Paste Special and choose Values Only. That way it enters the values just as I want them here with positive numbers as deposits or money coming in and negative numbers as money going out. So you can see there it looks nice. Then we just grab the information for the dates and the descriptions as well. So I'm going to quickly highlight those, copy. I use Control C. I'll right click. I'll paste special and paste values. And then I'll grab all those references or descriptions as well. So copy and paste special again. I could paste just regular but I'm going to change the color here. And I don't know, it just looks better if you pay special. So that's what I do. The last thing to do here, now that you've entered your transactions or entered your data from your bank account, is check that the running balance, the ending balance agrees to what's in your online banking or your bank statement. So here we can see our ending balance is 6198.13. We didn't have an opening balance. If we did, we'd enter it in here. And then we'd have a balance of 7198. But for us, we just opened this account. So we want to make sure that 6198 agrees to our balance here. So 6198.13. If it doesn't, you may have forgotten to enter an opening balance or maybe potentially something went wrong when you entered your transactions. You might have a flip sign here where you have a negative as a positive or maybe you've missed a transaction. Now that we've pasted everything in, we can start categorizing our transactions. I am actually going to record myself doing this so you can check out the whole process if you like. However, once you get the idea, feel free to skip ahead to the next section. You might not need to watch me categorize all of these transactions. So first up, we have a deposit and this says Stripe deposit from store. And maybe that's a different kind of deposit, whereas sometimes we would receive a deposit from online sales. In this case, I'm going to record it as revenue or sales. So I use the transaction type dropdown and I can see here that I have balance sheet accounts noted by BS and income statement accounts noted by IS. And so I have two sales versions, sales A and sales B. We can rename these if we like, and I'll show you how to do that actually later on in the video. But let's just say for now that sales A is our bricks and mortar store sales. So I've chosen sales A. And then from there, I can choose the sales tax rate that represents the correct rate. If you're not registered for sales tax and don't need to collect it, you can use no tax. Here we're in British Columbia and we'll say that all of our sales include GST and PST. So I'm going to choose that tax rate there. This now shows that GST was paid on this transaction by our customers and the amount was $74.34 that we collected. Moving on, we've got a paper statement fee. So that's probably just a bank charge. So you can use the drop down menu or you can start typing the account that you want and then select it when it comes up. So that's an income statement account, bank charges and interest, and that is no tax on that one. E-transfer fee is going to be exactly the same. So you could copy and paste if you like, or you can use the drop down menus. I'm just going to copy and paste because that's faster. And we're actually going to do that again for the monthly bank fee. So in this case, we had a bunch of bank fees and they're all recorded the same. We paid no tax, no GST or HST on that. And the total transaction was $2, $150 and $5. Next up, we received an e-transfer and I know what that is. I know that it was sales from our store. It might be something else in your case, but for us, that's another sales A. And we have GST and PST on that transaction as well. Next, we have a deposit from our online sales. So like you might guess, I'm going to use the other sales account to record that. And again, we're just going to say that all of our sales have GST and PST on them. It may be that you're in another province or you may not collect tax at all. So just make sure that you choose the appropriate tax rate based on where you are and what you sell. Here we have a payment that we've made. It's a negative amount and we paid it to this numbered company and it might take some inside knowledge to know that, okay, that numbered company is actually our landlord. And so in that case, that's a rent payment. So I can type in rent here and we have our rent expense and I know that we paid GST on rent. Another bank fee coming up and we can actually take this opportunity to just record a bunch of those bank fees all at once. So we can copy the appropriate transaction type and sales tax, paste it in. We can go to these other transactions that are the same. 
and record our bank fees quickly that way. In the middle here, we haven't recorded this. That's wage point payroll. So I know that that's wages expense and there's no tax on that. Parkade, we're going to call that travel. And I know there's GST only on that. And now you can see I can use the keyboard and mouse and type stuff. And it's probably a little faster than actually using the mouse alone. So again, Parkade, I'm going to type in travel, go up to the sales tax rate and enter GST. CPA store, I know for me that was education. So I'm going to see if I have an education account. I do training and education and GST was paid on that based on my receipt that I have in my hand. ATM withdrawal, that could be anything, but I know I took that money out and that is actually a shareholder withdrawal. So I'm going to record that to the shareholder loan account. If you're not sure about shareholder loans, we have some great information on our blog and YouTube channel on those as well. So that one's going to be no tax. It was just a personal withdrawal that I took out of the ATM. And then this is an interesting one. We have payment on credit card. And so this is cash coming out of our bank account. And we can see if we flip to the credit card, we should see that the other way. So January 16th, we've received $1,000 payment from the bank account. So if I go back here to my bank account, the one account that you need to use for any of these credit card payments or account transfers, if you have multiple bank accounts, is the transfer account. And it doesn't really matter, but we're going to put no tax on that because that's always going to be the case for transfers. Here we've got another bank fee from when I used the AT and another e-transfer of 315. That's probably this same recurring sales that we have. So I'm recording sales A, GST, and PSD. Next up, we spend a bunch of money at Best Buy, and I know that that was actually computer equipment. So I'm going to type in the start of the word equipment, and I'm going to choose the balance sheet account computer equipment. It's not an expense. It's a capital asset. It was a really expensive monitor that I bought as an example. This one we paid GST and PST because we're in British Columbia. So we can see 3255 of that was GST and that's what we have recorded in that column. Next up, we have a deposit at the branch. And I know because I made that deposit that it was really just sales that we made at the store. So I'm using sales A and we're going to go ahead and choose GST and PST. Sen Sushi is this great sushi place here in Victoria. So that's actually meals and entertainment expense. And we're going to say that there was GST on that. Amazon, we had some office expenses. So that goes to the income statement account office expenses and GST PST on that one. We have another rent payment that we made here so I can grab that rent account. And I know that there was GST paid on our rent. Next, we've got a loan payment that we received. So we took out a bank loan. So we want to use a balance sheet account and we'll see what we have there. I'm going to type in loan and we have a shareholder loan. It wasn't that it was actually a bank loan. So we can use this loan payable account and there's not going to be any tax on the loan payable. <laughs> Apparently we pay a bunch more rent. So that's on me. I made a mistake there, but uh, let's just say for whatever reason, we had more rent to pay. So I recorded it there. Rent and GST paid on the rent. Next, we have paid insurance for the whole year. So we're going to record that as a prepaid expense, which is a balance sheet account. So we can type in pre or prepaid and we get ES prepaid expense and there's going to be no tax on that. Next, we have a payment out of $1,800. So maybe we changed offices and we had to pay a rent deposit to our landlord. So in this case, we can type in deposits and we have deposits paid by you. So these are actual deposits that we've made and we'll probably get back once we move out. And there's no tax on that as well. Next, we have some office equipment because we have $250 and $350 spent at Office Depot. So let's say that we're furnishing our new office that we just put a deposit on. So in that case, we have furniture and equipment on the balance sheet and we paid GST and PST on that. So we're going to copy those and paste them down below. We also bought another computer monitor. So we're going to write computer equipment and we know that we paid GST on that. And then some tools were purchased as well, probably to install some things in our office. So we have no tools account. Let's see if we have other assets. We've created this other capital asset account to record things that aren't computer or furniture equipment. Again, GST and PST were paid on that. Then we received a deposit from a customer on work that we haven't done yet. So again, we can type in deposits, but we're going to choose customer deposits received instead of paid by you. And we have no tax on those. Here we have another shareholder loan and no tax on that. And then I guess the next day we had to deposit the money right back. So we are going to use our shareholder loan again and no tax. So you can see here money went out. We took out just over three grand. And then the very next day we deposited it back for whatever reason. But at least we've tracked that properly. Another sale deposit from our store, GST and PST, followed by a bunch of sales from our online store. So I'm going to go ahead and just copy that and record all of our sales like that. This next one, we earned some interest because we had a bank balance that was a bit large. So in this case, we can record it as interest income and there's going to be no tax on that one. Here you can see we have a refund and it's money going out. So somebody came back to our store and wanted a refund. So in that case, we gave them a refund and we don't actually have a refund account, but we do want to just record it as a negative sale. So all we have to do because it's a negative of here. We can record it to our sales, make sure that we use GST and PST, and it's going to reverse that sale that had previously been made. 
The next day we purchased some goods for resale. So in that case, we're gonna call those cost of sales or cost of goods sold. And we only paid GST on those because we're a retailer, so I can choose GST. Next up, we paid for some advertising and I know that we paid GST. So more bank fees, no tax again insurance, no tax again. So I'm going to say we went to a good restaurant, ate some meal, and there was GST on it. Then we went to Office Depot and bought some more furniture and equipment. There was GST and PST on that, followed by we went to the law office for some reason, and we paid some professional fees, and we only paid GST on those. And then here's our first payment to our new landlord. So again, we have some more rent expense, and we have GST that we pay on our rent. Almost done here. Hardware store for light bulbs. We had some repairs and maintenance, and there was GST and PST on those. We also have this Google software subscription so we can use software subscriptions and in this case i know that there was gst and i think pst on that i have to check the receipt but let's just go with that consulting an advertising contractor okay so we could record that as advertising or we could record it as subcontractor potentially it's up to you it doesn't really matter all that much so let's say it was a subcontractor and we paid gst i have no idea what e-transfer to account 8675309 is so i'm actually going to use this suspense account all that does is it flags it to my accountant so that they can deal with it i'm an accountant i don't love that but if you're doing your bookkeeping, you might have to do that a little bit. So your accountant's probably just going to chuck it to office expense or something like that. BC Ferries, that's the ferry here. So we're going to call that travel. And there actually isn't any tax on those. So that's no tax. Apparently we went to a spreadsheet seminar. That's going to be some training and education. And I don't know, there probably wasn't any tax on so no tax. Utilities we paid. So let's call that exactly utilities. And I can't tell, but let's say that there was GST on that purchase. Hey, and we finally are going to make a payment on our loan. So let's pay down that loan payable. So no tax on our payment on the loan payable. So there we have it. That was a lengthy transaction recording session, but you can get pretty quick by copying and pasting things. So uh, don't fret too much. It's actually going to be faster for you than probably setting up some bookkeeping software and going through the whole motion of recording it that way. Once you've recorded the bank account transactions, go into the credit card, do the same thing, paste all of those transactions into here and record those. I didn't want to put you through that again, so I've done it for us. And uh, now we've finished our actual bookkeeping for the year. Okay, now that we've done all of our bookkeeping, we can check out our trial balance to make sure that things look okay. The first thing I'm going to do is just go down to this bottom row here, row 40, and make sure that all of these cells are equal to zero. If they're not, it might mean that we've made a mistake somewhere or we've missed recording some transactions. So if you don't see zeros here, you're going to want to go back to the bank account and the credit card tab and just make sure that you've recorded everything properly. Secondly, we'll want to take a look at our bank transactions and our credit card transactions just to see if the numbers make sense for the accounts. You can kind of skim through and check that there's no really strange numbers like I can see rent is 4400 wages is 6300 Those kind of make sense based on what I expected my expenses to be. Same with the credit card. I put some random numbers in, so none of this makes a ton of sense, but when they're real numbers, you'll want to make sure that it does actually make sense to you. Once you've reviewed the trial balance, you can go and take a look at the income statement. You can see that we have sales of 15000 and expenses of just under 14000 which led us to have net income of $1,254, which isn't awful if you're just starting out and you're doing this as a side hustle or you're getting things going and paying a little bit more money in rent and wages. So we just got to crank up that revenue to make this into a really viable business. But that's what we're doing here too, is we're saving money on professional fees by doing our own bookkeeping and being able to send this sheet to our accountant so that they can get started on the year-end work. You can use the share button at the top right and just enter your accountant's email address in, or you can download the file as an Excel document and send the Excel document in an email to your accountant. Either way, they're going to have all of this information, which will really help them get going on that year end. So now we know how to use the spreadsheet. I'm going to do a bit of a dive into how the spreadsheet works so that you can make changes like adding bank accounts or credit card accounts or changing some of the account names and types. So for the sake of understanding how it works, I'm going to do a bit of a review again. You can see in the bank and credit card tabs, we have the green sections where you're pasting in your transactions from your online banking. And then we have the blue sections where you're using these drop down menus to choose your transaction type or account or your sales tax rate here. This takes the rates from the sales tax rates tab there. So we can make changes in this section and they'll flow through to the column F here in the bank and credit card accounts. The sales tax dropdown takes our tax rates from that tax rate tab and uses those rates to back out the GST paid on transactions. So you can see that in column G here. This is important when filing sales tax returns. You see, when we change the rate, we get a different amount in the GST, HST paid or collected column. And then the net amount here is just the transaction amount minus the GST paid, and we get the net amount here. Column J here, the running balance, really just helps you make sure that you've recorded everything properly. As long as you enter the opening balance, you should have this following along with your bank account balance or your credit card balance, and the ending balance should agree to that same statement balance. So 
this credit card as of January 16th would have a balance owing of $197. So we would expect to see that in our online banking for the same day. Next, we can look at the trial balance. Here in the trial balance, we have all of the account types. You can see them here. These columns represent the net change in each account from the transactions that we've recorded in the bank and from the transactions that we've recorded in the credit card. The net change really just means how the account increased or decreased during the year. It doesn't take into account any opening balances for these accounts. So your accountant will have to look at that and just run a quick journal entry to record the net change to each account. It really only takes a minute or two, so no big deal. It's not going to be extra work for them that way. The top three accounts use a formula to calculate the net change for each account here. You can see here that the bank formula sums column B in the bank tab and the credit card formula sums column B in the credit card tab. GST HST formula sums the sales taxes paid and collected from both the bank and credit card tabs. The rest of these accounts use a sum if function to record transactions only when the account chosen matches the account listed there in the trial balance. So if the account says prepaid expenses in the bookkeeping tabs, it's going to sum that amount into this column here. And then the same goes for all of these going all the way down to the bottom there. Then this last row represents cash transferred in and out of your bank account. The total should always equal zero there. So it's not actually going to be recorded on the trial balance. It's just here to make sure that you've recorded the transfers properly. We can move on to the income statement next, where we can see that the income statement is just taking the income and expense accounts from the trial balance. It's just a snapshot of those so that we can easily see and summarize our total sales and our total expenses and our net income or loss. There's not a whole lot more to say there, but it is a really useful statement to have. Lastly, we have the sales tax rate tab. This is where those sales tax drop-down menus get their information from. You can see that these tax rates are the same as the tax rates on the sales tax tab. The GST HST amount paid uses a VLOOKUP to check the rates based on the drop-down menu and apply it to the total transaction amount to back out the GST or HST paid on each transaction. You can change or add new sales tax rates, and I'll show you how to do that in a little bit. If you want to change or edit any of the account names, it's pretty simple to do that. We just have to be a little bit careful to make sure that we update any formulas so that the amounts pull through to the trial balance properly. If we're just changing account names, editing the account names is really easy. All we have to do is take an account name in the trial balance and change it. Let's say that we want to update this suspense account so that it says telephone expense. We can just change it in the trial balance. I'll keep the same naming conventions here. And we're going to get a warning that I've set and we can just click OK. This just lets you know that if you're changing things, stuff might break. But if you know what you're doing, that's totally fine. So just click OK or we can say don't show this again for five minutes. Now that we've changed this from suspense to telephone expense, we can see that it's pulled through to our other transaction drop downs here. We now have telephone expense there. I've used BS and IS to denote balance sheet or income statement accounts. And this is really important to understand that when you're changing accounts or account types or account names, because we don't want to change an income statement account into a balance sheet account or a balance sheet account into an income statement account. That could break things. So we want to keep within the same statement. So if you're updating a balance sheet account, make sure you use one of these. If you're updating an income statement account, make sure you use one of the income statement accounts to change. So that's really all we had to do to change an account. Now, if you want to add an account, it's a little bit more complicated, but still pretty doable. So we go back to the trial balance and I do recommend trying to keep things in alphabetical order. So I'm going to just change that back to suspense. And let's say that we want to add the telephone expense account. All we do is we create a space here by right clicking and inserting a row above. I'm going to copy some of the namings here. So account type is still expense. And then I'm going to type in income statement, telephone expense. And I said I'd keep it alphabetical. So let's move that up there. So now that we have that, we also need to copy these formulas so that this isn't just blank. We need it to have the exact same formula as the one above. So we can just grab all those, use the handle and drag it down one. And we'll now see we have the same sum if function and it's referring back to this cell, which now says telephone expense. Now that we've updated the trial balance, the last thing we need to do is just add that same account into the income statement. So the same idea, I'm going to add a row above travel here so that I can keep things in alphabetical order. And these are actually just formulas that refer back to the trial balance. So I can highlight both of those cells and use the little handle here to pull it down and I'll get my telephone expense and whatever balance exists in that cell next to telephone expense. So that's adding an account. All we have to do is add it in the trial balance, pull the formulas down and do exactly the same in the income statement. And it should flow through to both of our bookkeeping tabs. So we now have telephone expense here and we'll also have telephone expense as an option in the credit card as well. A quick note of caution here is that this template is made to be basic and to keep bookkeeping as simple as possible and to keep it free. 
So if you're finding that you want to change a whole bunch of things, this might actually not be the best choice for your needs. You could look at purpose-built software like QuickBooks or Xero. It has come a long way and you're going to use a program like Xero and you'll get your bookkeeping done quickly and you'll be able to customize accounts and financial reports pretty much however you like. Also, if you're curious about learning how to do bookkeeping using modern software, you can check out our online course that's linked up in the corner there and also in the description down below. It will show you step-by-step -step how to use the software and do your bookkeeping. Next up, I'll show you how to edit the sales tax rates. So here we are in the sales tax rates tab and we can see there are two columns, one that's the tax type and one that's a percentage. So these are the tax rates that I've included so far. We've got GST at 5%, but you'll notice that it percentages this funky 4.76 and on and on and on percentage. And that's because what we're doing is we're backing GST or HST out of our total transaction amount. So we're not multiplying a subtotal by 5%. We're actually multiplying the overall total by 5 over 105 here in this GST example. So how it works is we use a formula that is equal to the tax rate that we want to back out divided by 100 plus that same tax rate in this case. We can see we have 5 over 105 for GST. HST in Ontario, we have 13 over 113. HST in the Maritimes, we have 15 over 115. So in all of those cases, we're backing out the total amount of GST or HST paid on the transaction. If there's no tax, obviously we aren't taking any tax. One place where it gets a little funky is when we have two different types of taxes. So with GST and PST in BC, GST is refundable, but PST we can't actually claim back when we file our return. So because of that, we have to actually change the formula a little bit. We have the GST amount at 5% that we're actually backing out, but then we have 112 as the denominator there. So you can see 5 is GST over 112, which is actually 100 plus the GST and the PST. So that's the case there. What we do is we take the refundable tax amount at 5% and divide it by 100 plus both tax rates. So if we had 13% tax where GST was 5% and PST was 8%, like that. We could go into the percentage column, type equals, and type in 5 divided by 113. And that's going to give us our formula to back out GST when we had GST and PST at 8% there. Now that I've added that tax type, we can see it in both of our credit card and our bank account drop-down menus. So I could change this one here, and I could add GST and PST at 8%, and my GST paid column is going to change. It's going to use that VLOOKUP to multiply $1,000 times our crazy percentage in our sales tax of 4.42 and, and on and on and on. So that's pretty handy. We can see $44.25 of GST that was included in that $1,000 transaction. So it is actually really quick and easy. You could delete some of these if you didn't want them, like I actually don't want that, or you could add more or change names or change the rates, however you like, and it's going to get picked up in the credit card or the bank account tab. I'll show you how to add more bank or credit card accounts. But first, I'll repeat my note of caution that if you're finding that you have more than one or two accounts to add, you should probably look into bookkeeping software like Xero or QuickBooks. At that point, you might be getting more complicated than this sheet allows. So that being said, to add another account, first step is to copy one of the existing tabs that we have here. So we have a bank and a credit card. If you're adding a new bank account, might as well copy that tab. If you're adding a credit card, then copy the credit card tab. In this case, let's add a new bank account. So I'm going to right click and, and hit duplicate. And then we can change the name of the tab so that it makes sense to us. And keeping it simple is important for making the rest of the edits simple. So I'm just going to go and add a number two at the end of it. So we have bank account two. If you had a checking and a savings account, maybe you want to name them like that. Or maybe you have different financial institutions. You could call it RBC and TD, for example. Just whatever makes sense. And keeping it simple is also pretty important. So you can see in bank account two, we have all of our transactions. And normally we would want to delete these because we want to paste in our new transactions from our new bank account. But in this case, I'm going to leave them because they'll help us with the example of how to update the trial balance. But first, I will make one quick change so that we have a different ending balance so that it's easier to tell what's going on. So now I've changed the ending balance to $1,700 instead of about $67. That's all we need to do in this tab. And we can bump over to the trial balance and we can enter in a new column in between these two that's going to represent our new bank transaction. So I'll right click at the top and I will insert a column to the left. Then we're going to grab everything from column C all the way down to the zeros at the bottom there. We're going to either right click and hit copy or hit control C. So I've copied those and then I'm going to go to the top of the new column and I'm going to paste all of those in there. So I'll just rename this to say bank two and we're getting close. We're almost done, but we just need to update all these formulas so that they refer back to the appropriate tab. 
Right now, they're still referencing the first bank tab. So if we just enter the new name of the new tab into this column, we can do that here. So I've got bank account number two, and there's nothing in RBC Visa, so I don't need to worry about that. And then I can go and change this to say bank account two. So we do actually need to do it this way where we're typing it in. You would change the full name if you had a full name change on the tab, just to make sure that it refers back to the appropriate tab. The rest of these transactions, we'll need to update a couple of references, but it's going to be quick because we only have to do it on one cell and then drag it down. So we have this reference here, bank account two, and we also have this second reference here that needs to say bank account two. Now that we've done that, let's click the cell and we're going to drag it all the way down. So it applies the change to the rest of those cells. And you can see, we know we've done a good job. We have the new ending balance for this new bank account. And we have a nice zero here to show that, hey, you've got everything right. We were expecting this to all be nil. So good news here is that we're all done, but we just want to make sure that everything looks okay. We can see total of all of our transactions. It's still summing everything left to right. And that goes all the way down to the bottom. And we have zeros at the bottom, which is nice. And then we can have a look at our income statement. And it's really going to just duplicate everything from that we recorded in that original bank. Probably won't be the case for you, but for us, we can see we now have sales of 30000 and total expenses of about 27000 Hey, we got a little bit more income. So that's it. We've added a new bank account. So you can do your bookkeeping, create all your transactions in your first bank, second bank, credit card, and you'll have this nice trial balance ready to send to your accountant. And there we have it. That's my thorough tutorial on how to use this spreadsheet and how to make changes if it's not quite right for you. If you're finding that it's not quite cutting it, I do recommend checking out some purpose-built software like Xero or potentially QuickBooks. But the whole point of this is to make this as easy as possible and save you some money so that you can work on building that business and potentially hiring bookkeepers or accountants like Avalon to help you out. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video.